Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Director of Science, Medicine, and Public Health, Andrea Garcia, in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Uh, Andrea, last week, we heard from Dr. Walensky, the CDC Director, and her tone uh, had changed noticeably. Can you tell us about her message and what feels like a worsening outlook for us right now? Yeah, thanks, Todd. It's good to be here with you again. The theme of her message uh, was really consistent with what we've been saying, and that is that the U.S. is not out of the woods yet with this pandemic, and we find ourselves again at a pivotal point with the highly infectious Delta variant, which is significantly impacting unvaccinated communities. If you remember back to July 4th, you know, we seem to be throwing a party declaring independence from the virus. Uh, but the tone now, uh, we're hearing Dr. Walensky call the Delta variant one of the most infectious respiratory viruses known to scientists. And, and that's really concerning because we still have tens of millions of Americans who are not yet vaccinated. I think there's a growing sense of concern, uh, especially among parents with young kids who are not yet eligible for the vaccine, and even among those persons who are immunocompromised, who may be fully vaccinated, but not yet fully vaccinated. Yeah, this uh, it's very unsettling, and I think a lot of people out there, you know, thought this was uh, kind of over, uh, at least in this country. Are you know we're looking again at again the pandemic among the unvaccinated and uh, uh, big concern. Uh, you know, when you look at the stats for the weekly cases and deaths, you know, what are you seeing there in terms of the trajectory? Yeah, so this week we are at 34,536,402 reported cases of COVID-19 and 611,012 deaths. So the number of new cases has increased by almost 250% since the beginning of the month. We're averaging about 50,000 new infections reported each day, and that's up from 12,800 per day on July 1st. We're also seeing increased hospitalizations and deaths. We've seen an average of 269 daily deaths over the past week. Uh, that's far fewer than the highest levels er earlier last year, but it's 19% higher than just last week. You know, we're still seeing that 97% of those hospitalized are unvaccinated, uh, which further supports uh, what we've been saying that vaccines are effective against the variant in preventing serious illness hospitalizations. And that's a critical point in the in the discussion. Um, you know, now that we're seeing kind of uh, that incredible trend, and not a good one. Uh, is there a discussion that you're seeing on reinstating uh, universal mask mandate, uh, given all this news? Yeah, so for now, the CDC guidance for vaccinated individuals remains the same and masking indoors is not required but it's being widely reported at this point that the CDC is actively considering revising, revising its guidance. So we may see them recommend fully vaccinated individuals wear masks in public settings. We're expecting an announcement up on this at any time, but we don't yet have the details of what the new guidance is gonna say. But what we do know is that local health officials can take those steps they need to protect the public in their jurisdictions when they're seeing higher cases or lower vaccination rates. So last week we talked about LA County and their move to reinstate uh, mask mandates in indoor public spaces for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. And this week we're seeing other uh, jurisdictions take those same steps. So Provincetown, Massachusetts, St. Louis, Missouri, they're moving in that direction as well. And I would just also note that in Washington state, we've seen a number of counties, including Seattle, King County, who are recommending that vaccinated individuals wear masks in indoor public places, because this is an extra layer of protection and it will help us all stay safer. Uh, some words from Dr. Fauci as well uh, about uh, revising these guidelines. Any word on that? Yeah, so he indicated that CDC is actively considering revising that guidance. And so that's really what we're seeing in the news today, that those conversations are happening and we can expect an announcement on that soon. All right. And we'll be back to you with more information upon that announcement. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we are seeing a continued trend in a number of states where the vaccination rates are lower relative to other states. Can you talk about which states are being most effective right now? 
Yeah, so every state is reporting growth in COVID-19 cases, but the latest surge is really being driven by severe outbreaks in a handful of states. Uh, at the White House COVID briefing last week, it was noted that 40% of all new cases the prior week were recorded in just three states, Florida, Texas, and Missouri. Florida continues to lead the nation in new cases, recording more cases this week than California, Texas, New York, and Illinois combined. And like elsewhere, it's the unvaccinated that account for nearly all of its hospitalizations and deaths. Um, what we're hearing from epidemiologists is that there are various factors at play in Florida. It's the large number of unvaccinated people. It's the relaxation of prevention measures like mask wearing and social distancing. It's the spread of the Delta variant and people congregating indoors during hot summer months. We're seeing some pretty sad stories come out of those states, a doctor telling you know, stories about people that are asking for the vaccine at the point of being put on a respirator at that point. As the doctor said, it's too late, so uh, get vaccinated. Um, are we seeing you know, any kinds of signs of other severe outbreaks in other states? You mentioned that you know, the rate is basically up across the board. Uh, any other kind of uh, issues? No. Yeah, yeah. So if we look at Alabama and Mississippi, which have some of the lowest vaccination rates in the country, they're at only about 34% of their population. Um, in Mississippi, the daily cases is now up more than 200% in the past two weeks. And that is driving hospitalizations and deaths almost exclusively among the unvaccinated. In Alabama, the average number of new daily cases has tripled in the last two weeks to more than 1,100 a day, and that's the highest rate since mid-February. We know that ICUs are filled and filling quickly in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas, and Louisiana, which has an average, has, was averaging fewer than 400 cases a day at the start of July, is now at more than 2,400 cases a day. Um, and when we compare that to Vermont, which has fully vaccinated two thirds of its residents, the numbers there really look a lot better. Well, I know that in uh, many of those states are uh, down in, uh, mostly in the kind of South, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, the governor, I think of Alabama out there kind of stumping for the vaccine. Are we seeing any kind of movement in increasing vaccination efforts there? So we're seeing some. So in the five states with the most significant rise in infections, Arkansas, Louisiana, Florida, Nevada, Missouri, uh, we're seeing vaccinations rate, rates beat the national average for the second week in a row. Um, we know that immunity from vaccination takes time though, so it may take a while before we see the benefits of that increase in vaccinations in those populations. And with the Delta variant spreading so rapidly, um, we know that we may need to take other preventive measures as well. Yeah, it's real catch up mode, uh, given especially because people need two doses of the mRNA vaccines, Moder Moderna and Pfizer. So uh, a lot of time built in there to make, to reach kind of that level of immunity from the vaccines. Um, do we know anything about uh, this group that's kind of, you know, finally getting vaccinated? Are they being driven to do so by these outbreaks? What is making the difference in, in moving them ahead? Yeah, Ted, it's, it's difficult to say for sure who is getting vaccinated right now. Um, it, it seems obviously that these people were not the ones who were really eager early on and rushed to get vaccinated. They're not that highly, highly vaccine confident group. Um, but it also seems that they're not the ones who are firmly opposed to vaccinations. So the New York Times did dozens of interviews in eight states last week and, and in multiple vaccine settings. So clinics, drugstores, mobile sites, and they were really talking to people about who, you know, why they were getting vaccinated and then just trying to get a better picture of who this group is. And I think what they found is this is this is the middle ground. This is what we call that movable middle or the uncommitted. Such an important uh, term in marketing uh, from my world is to understand that movable middle and kind of, uh, you know, figure out what it going to, what kind of messaging it's going to take to move them versus hardcore uh, resistors on the far end of that. You know, you can't. It's not just kind of one block of people. It takes a lot of different messages uh, to really close that gap. Any kind of insights from that article or in other places on how we reach that movable middle? Yeah. So we 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 know that they have either been unwilling or unable to receive a COVID nineteen vaccine until now. So it, it's either taking 
someone or something. It's either a persistent family member, a work requirement, or a growing sense of, of seeing the millions of people who've been vaccinated and this realization that they're safe that may have convinced them to get vaccinated. So their answers suggest that it's, it's either mandates or greater restrictions on the unvaccinated that could really help make a significant difference here. Um, we don't yet know like how many people are ultimately in this group and how many of them will get vaccinated and how quickly. And that's really what we need to know to, to, to understand the course of the virus in the US. Um, but obviously we do know that there's great potential for physicians to help move this group. Um, a physician's strong recommendation for vaccination really goes a long way here. Yeah, I just read a, just yet another story this morning about what it's really gonna take to move people. And again, physician trust rises to the top of that list each and every time. Um, you know, beyond the states that we're talking about uh, right now, any other kind of overall uh, observations about the vaccination rate uh, nationally? Yeah, so providers are administering about 530 doses per day on average, and that figure has been holding pretty steady in recent weeks, um, but it obviously remains well below our April peak, about 3.3 million people were getting vaccinated per day then. The CDC is reporting about 188 million people who've received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, that's 56.8% of the population, and that's 163 million people or 49.1% who have been fully vaccinated. The percentage of adults, so people 18 and older, who've received at least one dose of vaccine is at 69%. So we're just shy of that 70% mark that we hope to reach by the 4th of July. But I would note that when we look at that number on a state-by-state -state level, we've only, we're only at about 22 states that have met that 70% threshold. Yeah, that really is the kind of underlying story there, the difference between uh, states, especially with what we're seeing now with the Delta variant. And uh, it's good to see. I mean, it's been you know two weeks past that, quote, original deadline, but uh, seeing where we are right now at 69% overall, that is good news, but still a lot more work uh, to go. Um, you mentioned this issue about uh, mandatory vaccines, and uh, you know there was some news uh, yesterday uh, with the AMA and a number of other groups. Uh, can you talk about what that announcement was? Yeah, so in line with everything that we've been talking about today, the AMA joined 55 other healthcare organizations and societies in supporting vaccine mandates for all workers in healthcare and long-term care settings. That joint statement, which was released on Monday, said that mandating vaccines is the logical fulfillment of the ethical commitment of all healthcare workers to put patients and residents of long-term care facilities first. Um, we are gonna have Dr. Susan Bailey, AMA's past president, uh, on shortly to talk more about uh, that announcement, what it means. Uh, so you can look forward to that uh, later this week. Um, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. Andrea, thanks for being with us today and sharing your insights. We'll see you again next week for another update. In the meantime, for updated resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us. Please take care.